Hi, we're going to talk about atomic radius. So first of many trends. Let's first look at the anchors that I've put on the periodic table. We are generalizing the periodic table when we talk about trends. We are going to compare cesium to fluorine. Okay, those are the two anchors. Um, and the reason why we don't include francium is that it's uh, really unstable. It has a, um, a very short half-life. Um, so we're going to use cesium as our comparison as one um, side of the periodic table and then fluorine as the other side of the periodic table. So here it is, okay? And you can memorize this trend and then I'll give you the justification for it. Atomic radius increases as you go down the periodic table and as you go from right to left, which means cesium, again, this is generalization, we're going to say is the largest atom on the periodic table. In contrast, fluorine is going to be the largest atom. Now, I didn't include the noble gases, and is helium smaller? Yes, it is, but I'm making a generalization here. The noble gases, because they're so stable, they, um, they're not going to follow this trend. I want you to look at the periodic table like this, a generalization for this chunk of the periodic table. Um, so fluorine, we're going to say, following this trend, is going to be the smallest atom, smallest atomic radius. Now, what is atomic radius? You can think in your head, atomic radius is distance from the nucleus to the valence shell, the outermost electrons. In reality, how we measure this is we take the distance between adjacent atoms. So we go from the nucleus to the next adjacent nucleus, and then we divide that in two, and that gives us atomic radius. So measuring it, we actually have to have two nuclei together. Um, but you can still think about it once we calculate it, it's the distance between the nucleus and the valence shell. Okay, if you have this question on a test, you will never say, oh, cesium's the largest because the trend says as you go down the periodic table to the left, you have the largest atom. That's not the justification. You have to give the chemical, the atomic structure justification. Um, so memorize it because it will help you, but when you write it, here's what you write. Um, the reason why uh, atomic radius increases as you go down the periodic table is because with each consecutive energy level, the atom gets larger. Think about this. Let's compare sodium with potassium. So we've got our sodium atom, its valence shell is at the third energy level. Potassium, its valence shell is at the fourth energy level. We gained a whole energy level, so sodium is larger than the, the or excuse me, potassium is larger at the fourth than sodium at the, at the third energy level. So how I would write this, I would say sodium has a smaller radius than potassium because sodium has one less energy level for its valence shell. Um, it has, it ends at the third energy level um, potassium's valence shell is at the fourth energy level. Okay, and that's pretty easy to see. Pretty easy to see as you go down each period, you gain an energy level, those atoms get bigger. Now, why the atoms are largest as you go from right to left? Notice what I wrote at the bottom of the board. Um, our left-hand side, we're going to have the weakest effective nuclear charge. In contrast to that, over here on the right-hand side, is where we have the greatest effective nuclear charge. Now, if you have a question about effective nuclear charge, watch that video. Um, I'll explain it just really, really quickly here. If I'm comparing lithium and fluorine, here's where students get confused. They're like, okay, same energy level. I'm at the second energy level. Flor or excuse me, lithium has one valence electron and fluorine has seven valence electrons. So it seems to a student that, oh, more electrons in the valence shell means uh, there's going to be a larger um, atom. That's not true. It's actually because there's more electrons in that valence shell um, that, and it's really that there's more protons um, at this particular energy level that the atom is going to attract and get smaller. Here it is. Effective nuclear charge is the power of the proton. We have three protons right here acting on one valence electron. Over here, I've got nine protons acting on those seven valence electrons. It's because we have more protons, there's this increased ability for that positive to attract, 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 and pull in those electrons. 
So because of that effective nuclear charge, the positive inside the nucleus attracting, there's more protons on this side for this energy level, those protons attract, they literally pull in the electrons a little bit closer. So fluorine is smaller than lithium. Even though they're at the second energy level, literally fluorine will be a little bit smaller because those protons are attracting uh, with such great force those electrons to pull in. So if I were comparing these two, I would say lithium is larger than the fluorine because fluorine has a greater effective nuclear charge, making the atomic radius smaller. So there you have atomic radius. Remember, cesium is the largest, fluorine the smallest, two reasons why. We increase energy level and we have the weakest effective nuclear charge. Okay, good work. Um, two on this, practice it. This will be one of your favorite trends. Have a good day.